Hey friends, I am here with the amazing and talented Perniel Rip. We are at the Chicago Reading Summit. Perniel, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm amazing. <laughs> and I am so excited to talk about the Global Read Aloud with you today. And you are the founder and the president, CEO. You are the <laughs> face behind this amazing, amazing thing that connects readers. Can you just talk a little bit about what it is and how it started? Sure. So the Global Read Aloud started in 2010. My husband and I were driving in the car listening to NPR, because what else do you do during the summer? And, uh, a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> All right. And they said Neil Gaiman. I turned it up because Neil Gaiman is pretty much my favorite author. And they were talking about the One Book World, One World program that was okay. happening that year, which was on Twitter, where they were reading American Gods using a common hashtag. Supposedly, I said to my husband, somebody should do that for kids. And supposedly, he said, why don't you? Supposedly. He says that, no, he says this never happened. But I swear, this is the origin story of the Global Reader. Okay. Book. And so I went home, and I wrote a blog post on yeah, that's yeah, how it yeah. came to well, be. Actually, <laughs> I just said, you know, what if we do some sort of Global Read Aloud, we choose a book, and then we use wikis to connect, because I just learned about wikis. <laughs> And, uh, and that was it. And so yeah, I yeah, had yeah, just started on Twitter either. and I mean, didn't really know anybody. You know, and a couple people who knew a lot of people tweeted it out. And so then people were like, how do we do this? And I said, I don't know. And so then I realized that we needed a blog and we needed somewhere to sign up. And that's how it's been. It's been super organic. That year we did The Little Prince with 300 students. Yeah, I pretended it was a vote and it really wasn't because I just love The Little Prince. And so 300 people, or 300 kids, used wikis and blogs, and we Skyped, and we talked. And then when we were done, people were like, let's do it again. And I was like, no. All done. <laughs> Too much work. And they were like, well, if you're not going to do it, we're going to do it. And I was like, all right. I'll do it, I'll do it. Yeah, I was like, we'll do it, but let's do it in a year. Like, let's wait. And so that's how it's grown. And so last year, I think we were at like 2 million kids. I don't know. And I say, like, I think, because, like, that's who signed up. Yeah. And so we might have five. But I know uh, there's a lot, and it doesn't really matter. I just think, like, even if there's just, like, one other class doing it, that's really what it comes down to. It's amazing. With what are positions you be in the house? I think people always wonder. We're recording. It's loud. So we had to move because it was super loud, and now it's loud again. So we're going to go find another spot. Global Read Aloud video has become Colby and Perneal look for a quiet place. So we are on the skywalk, and we're going to go and try again. You think we'll have better luck? I think it's going to be amazing. And we've seen like everyone. We're seeing people. We saw and talking so books. many of our friends. We talked about Mary and Johnson, Parker, Parker Inheritance. Parker Inheritance, and we talked about Be Prepared. <gasps> and we talked about Ryan Higgins' new book. And we talked about Travis Yonkers, The Very Last Castle, amazing. which you have read and I haven't. I'm so mad at you, Travis. <laughs> oh, it's so blurry. Come on. There we go. Wow, oh, those lights not. Oh, see those lights on the ceiling? They're bothering me. Are those. In <laughs> friends, we are in a new location. We are at the book fair at the Scholastic Reading Summit in Chicago. We have looked everywhere <laughs> to find the perfect spot to tell you about the 2018 Global Read Aloud selection and we found it. It's quiet. There's That's, books. There's books. We ran into so many nerdy book club friends on our way here. Mm -hmm. Pernio. <laughs> we did it. Can you talk about the selections for this year's Global Read starting with the picture books. I would love to. Um, selecting the books is always super hard. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of different factors that go in behind the scenes because it's not just about finding a magical book. It's also making sure that it represents a wide berth of people and gives us things to talk about and that people can even get a hold of it around the world. And so this year, um, I felt really, really strongly about the picture book author selection, and it is the incredible Julie Flatt and Monique Gray Smith, both indigenous writers and illustrators out of Canada, and their picture books um, speak to me on so many levels, and I know they will for, for other people as well. Um, it not only allows us to shine a highlight on, uh, frankly, a culture that is not taught enough and not talked about, and, um, and also just beautiful family stories that I think we can all relate to. So. I'm very excited. This is our first time we've had native representation in the Global Read Aloud, and that makes me really happy. And with the, the people participating in the picture book study, it's mm -hmm. one book a week. One book a week, and you don't have to be little kids. Like, that's the big thing for me. Any age group can do the picture books. I've done it with my seventh graders. It's really just like if that works for you, a lot of librarians end up doing the picture book author studies because they, see they, don't, see, yeah, see, they yeah. don't see the kids. 
And so don't feel like, oh, I have to have little kids to read these, especially because these books are so universal. The message is so huge. And the picture books always open up larger conversations about the world and about culture and history. So I'm excited. That's exciting. And the choices, <laughs> we, we had so much success with the book fair that we wanted to give you a little more. Book fair. Yeah, and there's someone walking by, which is fun. So, sec uh, the early reader portion of the Global Read Aloud, what is this year's selection? Boy Call Bat, Elena K. Arnold's amazing book about a boy who really just wants to have a skunk as a pet. And what I love is when we can find books that have really large issues in them, but it's not the issue of the book. And I think about all of us that have taught these kids, that have these kids in our families, that are really set in their ways and just want the world to be a certain way. And so navigating around that and making sure that these kids have normal childhood experiences is so huge. And who doesn't want a skunk for a pet? And Elena is amazing. And it's a series, which I love yeah. too. So people participating in the Global Reader Lab, they can get the, the paperback. Yeah. They can get the paperback mm -hmm. for the first one. And then when they're when you're done participating in the class, anyone who's really excited can go on and read book two. Yeah which is always fun. The kids always want more, especially at that age. Right. Especially at that age, those are a lot of serious readers and kids will be excited and it is a beautiful book. All right, friends, <laughs> we are here for the middle grade selection, which for me is always very exciting to see. And I will be participating for the first time in the world. <gasps> that makes me really because nervous. Because you picked this book. So. This book is amazing. Yeah. Amal so can you, Unbound. Amal Unbound. So is incredible. Isn't that beautiful cover? Look at that. And what do you think this book brings to global First of all, it brings Pakistan. And how often do we have books that talk about Pakistan and not in a historical sense? And that was the thing, like when I was reading it, I, I kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is happening right now. This is happening right now. Plus we have a super strong girl character, which I'm all about, and a girl who's trying to figure out how to get out of a really bad situation, and there, it's not perfect. And I think that that is so important too when we connect to books. And so for this book to gain a larger audience, I can't wait to see not just the conversations that are going to start, but one of the things that the Global Read Aloud does a lot is service projects. And so people will come up with service projects that tie in with the book, and I think about what if we actually could make a difference for indentured servants around the world, or just to learn more about the plight of other people. I love this book so much. And this is the biggest one. This is always the biggest one for Global Read Aloud. This is where we have the bulk of people doing it. And so it's a big deal. And this is a big deal book. It's 226 pages, which is a magical middle grade length. It is. It is a magical. You can get through it in six weeks. And and Amal loves books. Uh, I think that this character, even though she lives thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away from my students, my students can understand and try to relate to what it is to chase your dream and to have something taken away from you and things uh, dealing with things that are not fair. Because my fifth graders, fair is so important, mm -hmm. and life is not fair. And I think for them to be able to see what this girl does when life is so much more unfair than what many of them have ever experienced, and how she doesn't quit, and how she finds a way, I think my students are going to get a lot out of it. And I think that's it for Global Read Aloud. Yes, it's about reading incredible books, but it's also about shrinking the world and really building those connections so that we can see how similar we are. Because I think we're really good about pointing yeah. out differences uh, or getting better at it and saying, let's, let's celebrate these differences. But what if we also look at the similarities? Because that's when I think the magic of the Global Read Aloud happens, when kids go, oh, hang on, she's just like me. Even though nothing in her situation is yeah. the same as theirs, but that they can connect on a human-to-human -human level. Hey, friends, we are now going to talk about the like, middle school age-ish. Yeah. Loud selection. Or if you want a longer book. Or if you want a longer book, and it is? Refugee. Oh my gosh, this book is incredible. Um, Alan Gratz did an incredible job taking the history of three different refugee crises and weaving them together. And every single kid that has read this book has just been like, what? And here's my tip. If you read Refugee with your students, I highly recommend the audio. I read this book aloud to my students, first time in my life, as an audiobook. Really? And we sat around the carpet in a circle, and I had a little, one of those little Bluetooth speakers in the middle of the carpet, and on my phone I had the audiobook, and I would press play, and we could experience it. It has three different readers, which helps so much. So you really get a feel for those different characters through the person that they selected reading it. So try, if, at least listen, it's it amazing. It's an amazing audio. This is the book that I'll be doing with my 7th graders, but I know some, sometimes people are like, is this for middle school, is it too mature? 
figure it out yourself. Read it, pick the book that connects most with your kids and with you. And I think about with Refugee, what hit me the hardest was in one of the stories at the end where he goes, the only time people see us is when we're praying and not when we need their help. And so for me, in a little behind the scenes where we'll read a loud secret, the, re the service project that we'll be working with this year has to do with the refugee situation around the world um, because that's how we can all give back and try to make a better world. I love this book. You it's have something amazing. cool to show. I do, and we're because we're at this classic reading summit. We just stole this from the table over there. We said we'd give it back, but they were we like, eh. so I'm like, maybe they don't really want it back. Alan's next book, Grenade. So we might just steal this book here. <laughs> I anyway, want it too. Yes, yeah, so we have one more selection. Mm -hmm. So let's go find another fun spot in the book fair to talk about it. Okay, <laughs> the young adult selection, the high school-ish book this year is. Love Hate Other Filters by Samira Ahmed, debut author, incredible. When we talk about conversations that need to happen, chasing your dreams, Islamophobia, all of those things that are happening in our world right now are happening in that book. But again, even if there's bigger issues, it's really just about a girl trying to find herself and trying to figure out what path she's going to take to be happy. You're going to make me laugh. It's well, such I did... a good book. <laughs> and... I'm laughing because every other time you talk to the camera, oh, yeah, now I'm and you're you. way more uncomfortable talking to the camera, and you much prefer talking to people. Yes, I, I like people. That's why I was smiling, sorry. I, I like people. Not that I wasn't listening. So, amazing selections, a wide variety of books, and what tips would you have for someone like me who is going to try, and I'm not good at like following rules mm -hmm. and things, so like, what tips would you have for someone wanting to do Global Read Aloud for the very first time? Make it your own. There's really a ton of ways to do Global Read Aloud. It kicks off October 1st. You can even just do it, reading aloud the book to your kids and knowing that you're part of something bigger. But some people jump in with both feet and do all sorts of crazy stuff, way crazier than I've ever done. The nice thing is there's tons of veterans out there that will help you. If you go to the Facebook community or if you go on Twitter, there's a hashtag, GRA18. People are already sharing ideas and resources and what they plan on doing. But the thing is, the only rule really is don't spoil the book. Don't read ahead and then spoil the book like one of my students did one year. That's it. Don't spoil the book. No, and if you get behind, that's okay. I am usually behind and I'm like the creator of the project and I can't stick to my own timeline. That's good though because that helps people to see that it's oh, yeah. not about following the timeline. It's not. It's about experiencing the book. It is. And make and the connections that will, will work for you and for your kids and use whatever tools, whether it's technology or not, that will... Um, work for you. I mean, I just looked at the other day and there's a lot of kids signed up all around the world and so the connections are out there waiting. There's lots of veterans, there's lots of newbies awesome. and it's pre-K through college. So there's even teachers that want to, like pre-service teachers that want to get involved. And I've talked to the authors and they're curing up and doing cool stuff for the project. So there's, there's make it your nice. own. I hope so. And I'll put all of the links to all of the stuff that Pernille talked about. I'll put links to purchase the books. Put all that down below. I want to know if you're watching and you've done Global Read Aloud, let me know what worked for you, what didn't work for you, why you choose to do it again and again and again. And if you're new, let us know what book you're going to be reading this year with your students. I'm so excited, Pernille. Think about all of the kids that will read these books because of this amazing thing. Like, like it is becoming like this global canon of books for these kids that have participated in it. Like, it's amazing. I'm so glad I didn't know that when I created the idea. It's crazy. I would have never done it. Because that's scary, yeah. right? So what it's about, reading aloud, making the world smaller. Reading aloud is so reading much Reading aloud fun. is the most amazing thing ever. All kids, all kids, this is why there's a high school choice, because all kids deserve to be read, read aloud to by Yeah, and I'm getting chills thinking about that, and because I read aloud to my students at the end of the year, Kate DiCamillo's Louisiana's Way Home, and I thought when I, when I closed that book, at the end, I thought, like, what if this is the last book they ever have read aloud to them? Like that said, like a lot of times when kids leave elementary school, they will never again in their lives have a book read aloud to them. So don't let that happen to your students. Read aloud to them. Consider doing Global Read Aloud. It's a great thing. And if, you have, if you have questions, just tag Pernille on Twitter. <laughs> I love right, it. Thank you so much. See ya. <laughs>